The following is an Eyewitness News special presentation. From Eyewitness News and your local weather experts, this is Eye on Hurricanes 2019. Technology and better forecasting have made tracking hurricanes more sophisticated than ever before. But as we enter the 2019 hurricane season, we're also reminded that it only takes one storm to test our plans. And coming off the heels of a destructive season last year, the message cannot be stressed enough. The time to prepare is now. And with that in mind, our goal for the next half hour is to get you prepared. We begin with more on the forecast for this year. The 2019 hurricane season starts June 1st and it will run through November 30th. The early season forecasts are calling for near average or maybe just slightly above average tropical activity in the Atlantic Basin this year. The early forecasts coming out from institutions like Colorado State University and private companies are calling for 13 to 14 named storms, five to seven hurricanes and two to three major hurricanes. You can compare that to the 30 year average for a season, which would bring us 12 named storms, six hurricanes and three major hurricanes. Remember last year we had 15 named storms, so a little above average, eight hurricanes also above average, and two major hurricanes. Those were Florence and Michael. Looking at some of the factors going into the early part of the season this year, a weak El Nino has been going on since April. That's a weather pattern that brings more wind shear and tends to suppress hurricane development. It is forecast to continue through summer and maybe even into fall. So that would be a good thing for us this hurricane season. There are also cooler than average or near average water temperatures for much of the Atlantic Basin, including the Gulf and Caribbean Sea, aside from just off the U.S. East Coast, off the Mid-Atlantic and Southeast Coast of the U.S. El Nino, remember, is the weather pattern where there are above average water temperatures off the coast of South America in the Pacific Ocean, and that translates into the Atlantic Basin by bringing more vertical wind shear, which is winds change speed and direction going up in the atmosphere with height. That makes it hard for storms to get organized. It can also bring more stable air, which again tends to suppress storm development and can bring us fewer tropical systems. Looking at water temperatures, again, mainly near average throughout most of the Atlantic Basin, but right now there are above average water temperatures off the coast of the U.S. Our 19, uh, 2019 hurricane storm names start with Andrea, Barry, Chantal, Dorian, Aaron, Fernand, and Gabrielle. And if we made it to the 12, for average named storms, that would take us to Lorenzo. If we made it to the 15 named storms that we had last year, that would take us to Olga. Our team of local weather experts works closely with the information from the National Hurricane Center during the season. And the man leading that agency worked in this area for many years. We spoke recently with Ken Graham about his priorities for this season. What is your biggest takeaway for this hurricane season? I've been really hitting hard the, the dangers of water. And, and you look at historically, 90% of fatalities are associated with water. And we know that well here. We, we, we've had flooding. We've had no-name storms uh, produce a lot of flooding here in Louisiana. So we've got to keep talking about those dangers. Hurricane Florence, 17 uh, fatalities because of the flash flooding. Most of all, all inland, 16 of the 17 in cars. So we've got to continue this conversation. So I'm spending a lot of time talking about that topic. You know, every storm is so different. You know, you hear that cliche. You look at the difference between Michael and Florence. So Florence, a heavy rain event, a slow mover, 10 days plus notice. I mean, you watch this wave come off of Africa. You watch it go all the way across. And then there's Michael. What a totally different storm getting to Category 5, which we just upgraded with, with our report. And so think about that. I mean, three to four days on a Category 5. Really got to practice these timelines because you're not always going to get that long notice. The main focus has been more on hurricanes, landfall, and, and, the, and the size of the storm, but what are the main impacts that we need to worry about outside of that main landfalling storm? Yeah, you, you can't compare, you know, the next season to the previous, and even the last couple of hurricanes. You know, you, you got Gordon, you've got a couple of these storms that, that really kind of lopsided. They didn't do as much as uh, expected in New Orleans. You can't let that change your preparedness because every one of them is so different. So, 30, 40 miles difference in those hurricanes that didn't do much here, all of a sudden we have a disaster on our hands. So every single year, it's so critical. I've been here for most of my career, 15 <laughs> years out of the total 25 I've spent here. Um, you gotta prepare as if you're gonna be hit, right? So you can't take any chance um, of not preparing for the season. There could be one hurricane on earth if it, if it comes to uh, Southeast Louisiana, then it's a busy season. We, we just have to be ready. 
You'll hear us talk a lot about storm surge when we're talking about hurricanes. That's because more than wind and flooding, it's often the greatest threat to life and property from a hurricane. Let's take a closer look at just what storm surge means. Many saw the report of an 83 foot wave from Hurricane Florence and wondered what that meant for the Carolinas. Strong storms in the open ocean can commonly produce substantial wave heights, as was shown in the movie The Perfect Storm, based on a true story where a 100.7 foot wave was observed from a non tropical storm. This is coming on strong. Waves are not going to be nearly this great as Florence makes landfall, but a surge of near 13 feet is possible. So, what is storm surge? Storm surge is the water height above normal tide. This is caused by a bulge in the water actually forming underneath an area of low pressure. If a storm surge of six feet, for example, was expected in Lake Pontchartrain, we would see the actual level of the water six foot above the normal height. I'm about six foot tall, so the water would be above my head and over Lakeshore Drive. Storm surge expected with every storm varies based on numerous factors. The strength and size of the storm are more obvious, but also the direction the storm is moving and the angle at which it makes landfall. Also the underwater terrain as well as the inland terrain. Each storm is different and it's very difficult to near impossible to compare. Computer models are getting better at forecasting storm surge, but one thing is certain. If you're near the coast when a hurricane is approaching, your best bet is to move to higher ground. Still ahead, predicting a hurricane's track is one thing, but as we've seen, correctly forecasting its intensity can be a challenge. We'll look at why. Plus, we'll head back to the Florida Panhandle where the recovery from a Category 5 storm, Michael, is still ongoing. And this hurricane season, you'll hear us use terms like invest, cyclone, and depression. So what do they mean? We take a look.